the molarity of the NaOH, remember brackets, NaOH, will be equal to moles divided, divided by, by the liters. But we have what? liters. I have the liters. It's 14.5. I have to convert to liters, but uh, I know it. So I just need to find the moles of NaOH. Okay. Well, we have moles of HCl. We so, just calculated that up there. Point zero zero five zero moles of HCl. So I have to do a little stoichiometry. Okay. And then I'm going to use the mole to mole ratio for my balanced equation. It okay. was one to one. Once, I don't think yep. I balanced it, but one mole of HCl to one mole of NaOH. All right, so we have the same number of moles. It of actually NaOH. turns out to be the same number. So it's yep. 0 0.0050 moles of HCl divided by point, now watch how I do this fast, point zero one four five liters, not HCl, of NaOH. Yes. Right. Of NaOH. All right. And, and I divide, divide them out, and, and I get point three four nine three digits three, four, five. two point three five molar I yeah. think actually yeah two sig fix so that's how you do it it's, it's really actually point three four but point three four okay yeah. close enough all right let's do one where we're trying to find molar mass okay. this is a little more tricky here yeah. okay so here we have a finding molar mass okay I see a bunch of numbers Mr. Sons I do but what I really need is an equation. Is an equation. So I've got NaOH reacts reach the equivalence point. We'll talk about how that works um, when we have a monoprotic acid. Monoprotic acid. Yeah. So hold on. So a monoprotic acid has the formula HA. Ha! Huh? And then we react that with NaOH. Now we need to write a balanced equation. Well, HOH! Yeah. See that neutralization podcast mm. played a role. Yep. Plus NaA. Now that's because the sodium has a one right. charge and monoproduct has a, uh, the, it's going to have one charge, mm -hmm. negative one. Okay, so the goal is to find what is the molar mass of this. Well, molar mass, if you call, is grams. the grams divided by the moles. So if I do the grams divided by the moles, then I get the answer. Hey, wait, it gives us the grams. Yeah, let's go back and write down what we know. All right, I have 15 millers of 0.45 molar NaOH. So I'm going to write that down. 15 milliliters of 0 0.45 molar NaOH. And I knew a mass. What was my mass? 0.45 grams. So this was 0.45 grams. Hey, there's that mass, Mr. Sams. Hey. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the 0.45 grams divided by the number of moles of HA. It has to be of HA. Yeah. So I don't know this number yet. Not yet. But once I know it, I'm done. Yep, let's find it. So I have um, a molarity and a volume. Oh, yep. MV. M times V equals moles. So if you multiply these together, 0.45 molar times 0 0.015 liters. Notice I'm playing the liter yep. game. What do I get? 0 0.00675. 0 0.00675, and that's moles, moles of NaOH. Right. I don't want moles of NaOH. Nope. I want moles of HA. And I say one mole of NaOH is one mole of HA. Now, we've picked reactions, on, realistically, I don't, that's not always the case, the case, that are all one to one. That's just kind of just the way these reactions happened. So that's a little bit of a misnomer. But mm -hmm. I, I don't need a calculator. That's 0 0.00675 moles of HA. Now, that number then gets plugged in here, and yep. we take the divide, and we get. 67 grams per yep. mole, looks like. So when you divide 0.45 by 0 0.00675, you get 60 67 grams in one mole. Yep. So that would be the molar mass of this particular monoprotic mm -hmm. acid. And I can think of no monoprotic acids with that molar mass. Yeah, so this is a total... <laughs> it's fictitious. a made-up problem. Yeah. Made-up problem. Okay. Um, okay, diprotic acids. Yeah, diprotic thing. acid's a little bit different. Because um, diprotic means it's not HA, but H2A. Right. So really the only difference is going to be in the mole ratio yeah. step. So Everything else is going to be exactly H2A the same. H2A plus NaOH makes water plus, now this would be Na2A, because mm -hmm. A really is going to have a negative 2 charge. Can you write water as HOH? It might be, make it easier to balance. Yeah, that's true. HOH. And so when I balance that, my sodium's kind of weird here, so I'm going to fix that by putting a 2 here. Mm -hmm. And I believe that gives me two hydroxides. I need a 2 here. Yep. So let's see what we know. I don't remember what we had. We had uh, 0 0.55 grams. This is 0.55 grams. 25.5. 25 milliliters of 0 0.45 molar. Wasn't that the same number of moles? Um, no, we had 20, 15 milliliters. Oh, okay. There. Now, again, the molar mass will be the grams, what, what's 0 0.55? 0 0.55 grams of H2A divided by so many moles 
of H2A. Which we don't know yet, but we can get. So stoichiometrically, I'm going to take M times V right here. So 0.45 molar times 0 0.025 liters. Again, I'm converting to liters quickly in my head. Yep, 0 0.01125. And that's moles of sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to pull that down here and take 0 0.01125 moles of NaOH over 1. I'm going to say, um, now watch this, 2 moles of NaOH, because of the 2 in the mm -hmm. balanced equation up here, is 1 mole of H2A. So divide by 2 and you get uh, 0.005625 moles of H2A. Of course, that number then gets plugged in here, and we get a grand number of 98, 98, 98 grams per mole. So that, I got that by taking 0.55 divided by 0 0.005625, and I got 98 grams in a mole. Yep. And that would be the molar mass of the diprotic acid. Hey, how do we know if we've reached the equivalence point, Mr. Sams? Um, well, there's a couple different ways. Yeah. Um, the way, uh, depending on uh, when you take our class, it, you might do this in multiple different ways in, yeah. in, in our lab. Um, so the most common way is to use a color changing indicator. Yeah. Okay. So in so a very common one. Let's go back to that. Yeah. And we, well, well, we demonstrated that when we, when we showed you the titration. Yeah. Um, we used a, an indicator called phenolphthalein. So, Sam, how do you know if you've reached the end point of a reaction? How do you know that you can, you've reached that when you've got the 45 milliliters of 0.25 molar? Right. right. Well, we're going to do that a couple different ways in here. So, first method would be what? Um, using a, an acid base indicator and looking for a color change. So, an indicator, color change. Yeah. So, the most common one we use and the one we use in the example that we showed you in this lesson here is uh, phenolphthalein. And we're going to abbreviate it FEN because it's a really long word and we like to write it. Phenolphthalein. Um, yeah, exactly. It's now that one goes thing. from colorless in an acid to pink in a base. So you're looking for a particular color change. Right. So sometimes it's actually called uh, colorometric. Yep. As you, if you care. Okay. Um, so colorometrically we can determine by a color change. The uh -huh. second method is by the center of the steepest part. of a pH graph. Yes. So another way you can do it is if you're graphing your data as you as you add um, as you, excuse me as you add the other reactant as you go through your titration um, if you collect all the data in terms of how much you've added and what the actual pH is, you graph that and then you look for the steep spot, which we'll show you here in just a minute. So, so let's take a look. So here's a pH meter. So a guy mm -hmm. using a pH meter, and then he would have a you know a burette like we showed in the demonstration, and he'd be adding to it, and he'd, and he'd take. It's really kind of a tedious process. It is. You'd have zero milliliters. You'd have a table, and then you'd record the pH. And so it'd be you know, uh, oops, uh, pH. Now this would be volume. And this pH. So zero, maybe the pH is 3.2. At 1.0 milliliter, it's 3.4. At 2.0, it's um, you know 3.6. And you would go down until you get to 40 milliliters, and maybe it's you know whatever. It's you're gonna. Yeah. It's a very Lots tedious. Lots of data collection. Yeah, a lot of data collection, and you would produce a graph that would look like this. See all the data points that this was mm -hmm. done on this particular one, each little dots. And you can see the steepest part of the center. See how it's, it kind of accelerates? Why it accelerates is more of an AP chemistry topic. Yeah. And so this is the center of the steepest part. And what you're looking for is this point down here for volume. So this is 34, 35, who knows? Uh, you could figure it out mathematically. You don't really care about this axis or this spot right here. What you care about is the volume down right here. Yep. It's the center of the steepest part. Okay. Now that's actually for what we call a monoprotic reaction. Mm -hmm. If you have a di or a triprotic acid, like in some projects that we'll do in this course, um, this would be a diprotic acid. Actually, no, this is a triprotic mm -hmm. acid. In a, uh, a triprotic acid that would be H3PO4, you would have the first equivalence point, but you usually don't care about the first equivalence point, but you care about the third equivalence point, and here's the second equivalence point. And the third one is usually not visible. Yeah, the visible. problem is the third, third is really hard to reach. But basically, it's always going to be three times. If this yeah. is at 10, then the third equivalent points will always be three times that yep. if it's a triprotic acid. And the second would be twice the first yeah. if it's a so dye. So it's 10 and then 20 the and then 30. Yeah. Yeah, realistically, an experiment would be 12.2 and then <laughs> times 2 and yeah. times 3. Um, this is just sort of a canned one. But mm -hmm. um, make sure you understand that when you're doing these graphs. So there's two ways to summarize this. There's two ways to know that you have reached the end point by the indicator color change. Yep. 
Now, there's kind of an art for picking which indicator, yeah. but actually it always goes back to this, because this is actually the best way. But if you know what color it changes, you can figure it out, right. or what pH it changes at. Um, so the center of the steepest part of the plotted pH graph um, is what you um, do. But then if you know where that is, you can uh, do this. It depends on what year we're doing this, whether you're going to have to do both or one of these. So um, hopefully that helps you understand that. I think that's the end of the podcast. I believe so. So let's double check. Oh, that's the next yep. podcast. Okay, so we will see you in class. So hopefully this long, very important podcast. Very important. Is, you may need to watch it again. Yeah, yeah. and um, if, when you're doing your lab, if you know you're going to do the titration lab, uh, you may want to go watch the demonstration that we did one more that time so you can see how to do it. Yep, okay, we'll see you in class. Bye.